Hey guys, so as you can probably tell from the title of this video, this is something a little bit different and unusual I guess for YouTube. Anyways, the reason why I wanted to film this video on my ovarian cyst experience and my surgery getting it removed is because before I was going into surgery, I was actually searching on YouTube for a video like this so I could kind of know what I was getting into and just relate to someone and I like didn't really find any I think I found like one or two that were kind of helpful but I wanted to create one for anyone else that's going through this because I know it's very common it can seem scary and hard and stuff so and let's just get into it yesterday I put on my story that I was going to be filming this video and I wanted to know if anyone had any questions the most frequently asked question was how did I know I had an ovarian cyst? Obviously this was the most requested question so I'm going to answer it. It's like a little bit TMI and weird but you know I'm trying to make this video to be helpful and vulnerable and informative to anyone out there that needs it so please um, bear with me and this TMI. So I knew I had an ovarian cyst because I was bleeding um, like all the time so in between my cycles like when I wasn't on my period I was bleeding and I didn't know that meant I had a cyst but I knew that that wasn't right obviously so after th that happening for about like three months or so I decided I needed to go see the doctor I went to an OBGYN and they did like a physical exam and f could feel my cyst then they referred me to a specialist actually a um, oncologist so a cancer doctor that specializes in ovarian cancer I believe I ended up getting an ultrasound to confirm that there was a cyst and where it was and how big it was and everything so ovarian cysts are super common they were just like yeah you have a cyst like it it will probably like burst on its own or whatever because I actually had one in college that did burst and it was like really painful um, I thought I was having like appendicitis or something but you know it just bursts it goes away it's painful but it's not really there's nothing you can do about it at that point and it's just sort of pain that's also very common but so my cyst we figured out was not that kind of cyst I, it wasn't like fluid filled or whatever so it wasn't able to burst and it wasn't going away so I basically monitored the cyst through ultrasounds and physical exams for two years and it shrunk once by like 50% other than that it was not going away it wasn't shrinking typically other than that one time so eventually the doctor was just like you know what it is best to get this out so the only option at that point is surgery the surgery that i got is a c-section cut on the bikini line so it's like below your pubic bone it's like very low um on your abdominal area and i got a horizontal c-section so uh, my cut is like probably right now it's like a little bit bigger i think because it's irritated and swollen i just got surgery a week and a half ago but it's like five to six inches i would say right now and it's just like a line they stitched it up from the inside out so the stitches are just gonna dissolve it looks like irritated and my body is obviously pissed off because someone just cut through it it's like swollen and all that but you know it's just a line and it's not that big of a deal and so a lot of people are saying that they have ovarian cysts also and they were like how did you decide you wanted to get surgery or should i get surgery like i said my cyst was i was monitoring it for two years i really didn't want to get surgery i was hoping praying manifesting doing everything i could in my power to make it go away without getting surgery but that wasn't working so um i had to get surgery simply because it wasn't going away and like scariest part about ovarian cysts is if they i don't know exactly the technical medical terms and all that but basically if they like twist um on your ovary they can cut off the blood supply to your ovary and kill your ovary which literally means your that organ like dies inside of you just super dangerous it's like super painful and it can i, I think it can be just like 
an absolute nightmare. You don't want that to happen. So if your cyst is persistent and you've had it for a long time and you have pain or whatever, I would definitely say discuss with your doctor if you can do surgery. You know, sometimes it's just best to get these things out of your body so that you don't have to worry about them and they can't turn into anything worse. A lot of people also asked if I felt pain from my ovarian cyst and I didn't really feel pain, I don't think. I feel like that's kind of a hard question for me to answer. It's obviously very subjective and I actually have a super high pain tolerance. I don't feel like I really felt pain ever, but maybe it was. I feel like there was just some discomfort there. Like I, I kind of just felt like I had like a sore ab on one side all the time i guess but yeah like for reference everyone's cyst is different their symptoms are different but as a woman i feel like you know sort of what's going on with your body and if something's wrong like if you're bleeding all the time or if you have a bunch of pain or if you just don't feel like something's right then you should go get checked out a lot of people also ask like what caused my cyst and there's not really an answer for that i don't have endometriosis i don't know of it really running in my family like cysts or anything but i would say in general ovarian cysts are just so common in so many girls and women just almost like a part of being a girl like so many of us have them one thing my doctor did say that could help prevent ovarian cysts in the future is actually being on the pill which is interesting because i kind of thought it was the other way like i was like i don't i don't want to be on birth control i don't want to take pills and like pump my body with all these hormones because i feel like it's unnatural and bad for me and it's going to create like too much estrogen or something so if you have a cyst i would definitely discuss the options with your doctor if thinks you need to remove it or if surgery is an option if it may burst and go away on its own all these types of things you should definitely discuss and have in the forefront when dealing with this situation a lot of people also asked if you can still have kids if you do have to get your ovary as well as the cyst removed as long as you have one ovary you can absolutely still have kids i know people who have got their ovary removed and they had kids and it was fine so you absolutely still can then a couple of people were just asking about surgery and the recovery so i will just go a little bit into that before getting surgery i was so nervous obviously like i think everyone is nervous before they get surgery like you're getting put to sleep you don't know if you're gonna wake up they're literally gonna cut you open while you're asleep and do stuff to your organs like it's it's really scary it's definitely helped to have a good relationship with your doctor and discuss all of your concerns and worries beforehand um my doctor and his team did such a good job of making me feel comfortable and safe and like i was in the loop for what was going on so i'm so appreciative of that and i definitely recommend like a strong communication with your doctor I was really nervous going into surgery but i was around my family and they were taking good care of me and my doctors so all those like positive vibes and good energy i feel like really helped me like get through that fear phase and like go into surgery as tough as i could be i went through surgery it was great and I woke up and obviously when you're in the hospital they're like pumping you with all this stuff and you're just coming off anesthesia which makes you feel some type of way too so i didn't i didn't feel bad at all when i woke up and then i spent one night in the hospital because i had the c-section cut which is uh, obviously a bigger wound and they need to like it's slower recovery they need to uh, monitor it more i forgot to mention earlier in the video you can also get your ovarian cysts removed typically with laparoscopy which is the robotic surgery so basically how they do that is they put four tiny cuts in you like a centimeter big or something in like a cross shape like your belly button and then like lower and then two on the sides and they put like a camera in one hole a, like a tool a knife or clipper or whatever they do to take the cyst out in one hole um like a gas tube in one hole to like fill you up with gas so they can like see stuff and i forget what's in the other one so that's like a lot quicker recovery the cuts are super small i did not opt for that surgery because i do not scar well sometimes i have like keloid scars and i didn't want like for 
dots on me with keloid scars the bikini cut is really low so it's like pretty much never gonna show like not even when I'm wearing a bathing suit or something so I actually chose that surgery over laparoscopy because I didn't want to risk the scars there's a chance that if they do laparoscopy they don't have enough like room to do what they need to do so they make all those cuts and they go in there with all that stuff and it's not working and then they end up having to do the larger cut as well that's like a really small percentage chance of that happening but i didn't want to take the risk and um the scar just made more sense for me to have it lower even though it's a longer recovery time so anyways i woke up i stayed in the hospital they monitored me they in my iv there was pain pills and then i was taking advil i think also and i was just super sleepy and chill like it wasn't bad i was super scared to like look at my cut like i didn't want to see it i knew it was there obviously but i like never wanted to look at it when i was in the hospital and then they make you do these like breathing things at the hospital to make sure you don't get pneumonia when i did that i like coughed a little bit and like you can't really cough when you have a c-section wound like that because obviously you use your stomach muscles to cough and it just it's super painful and you can like rip the cut back open so um i learned that on my first cough and then i pretty much never tried to cough like i'm still trying not to cough or sneeze um or like laugh super hard pretty much use your stomach to do everything so you're just really fragile so then i left the hospital and went home and started my recovery there and i actually never took a pain pill once i left the hospital so they were giving me some sort of pain pill in my iv but then once i left i never took a pain pill again so for the first two days i took tylenol i think like two times a day then i like stopped taking that after two days and i didn't take anything like i said i have a high pain tolerance and like i was in pain I could like feel my I still feel my cut right now like while I'm talking to you guys and like it is pain but it just doesn't really bother me and I really don't like pain pills I don't like the way they make me feel like putting them in my body and like I just you know I just got through the pain that's how I deal with it and for anyone that's about to go through this and worried about it hopefully that's comforting like I didn't even need my pain pills so you know, if your pain tolerance is lower, or you're really worried about it or whatever, they're going to give you a ton of pain pills and you can take them and you'll be like comfortable. Maybe it's comforting to you that I didn't even need them. Like it's not that bad. And every day, like starting the first day after surgery, you need to like walk so that you can start to heal and get the blood flowing and all that. So walking was hard at first. Like I felt like a grandma. I still actually kind of do. You just have to take like baby steps and walk super slow and it's painful but it's necessary every day got a little bit easier and uh, my mom and my grandma were taking care of me they did such an amazing job they're literally angels in my life and i don't know what i would do without them um, but one thing that my grandma said to me every day she was like you're gonna get a little bit better every day just remember that because she's actually had a lot of surgeries and she's had that same cut like four times or something it's like every day just a little bit better like you're not gonna wake up tomorrow and be all the way better but you're gonna be a little better than you were yesterday and that was like super helpful mentality for me to get through it so my mom and my grandma would take me on walks and they did a really good job they helped me with everything i eventually had to look at my cut and i was a little grossed out by it and i didn't want to change the band-aid or anything so my mom is a trooper and she did an amazing job with stuff like that so she took care of my wound and changed it take a shower afterwards you're not supposed to like rub your cut with soap and water or anything but you can like let soapy water run down and off of it which is good to just sort of like keep it clean kept a band-aid on my wound for or not a band-aid like gauze with tape for the first like four or five days probably wear like loose um i found that like my lacy underwear was actually the most comfortable and breathable on it it was it was hard and really wasn't feeling good or like anywhere near myself for the first week or maybe nine days and then after that i quickly like started to get back to normal life like i could 
my voice was getting stronger i could like talk normally um i could walk faster it was easier to get out of bed getting out of bed is like the hardest part i would say for the first week or so like you have to use your abdominal muscles a little bit to get up like that like i pushed as much as i could with my arms um but it just it hurts getting out of bed and getting into bed because you just have to like lean back and it's tough by like day nine or so i think i went out with clayton and we shot and you know i didn't have a ton of energy definitely i'm still not there with the energy but i i felt like a human again which was like the most important thing for me because just laying on the couch all the time is worse than pain like i the pain didn't bother me, but just being like bored and not doing anything productive was like really hard. And I tried to do like emails and stuff to stay productive. I actually had never watched Friends, so I watched pretty much like all of Friends. Shout out to Samira for recommending that to me. Um, and that, you know, just find like a good show that you that's like for me, it worked to have it just be like a happy, light show that's like always on. I also got a coloring book with my grandma and we colored a lot which was very therapeutic then i tried to do emails write blog posts i was still posting on instagram and stuff because that sort of made me feel like i was in the world still and i don't know that's basically everything i think um it's a week and a half like a week and a half that i had my surgery ago week and a half ago that i had my surgery so um i wanted to film this when it was still very fresh so that i don't forget anything and that it seems informative as it can be to you guys like i just went through this i'm still going through it and that's basically my experience so i hope this was helpful to anyone that's going through it if there's anything i didn't answer in this video you can write me a question below and i will do my best to answer it and for anyone that's going through this i wish you the absolute best luck it's going to be okay you can totally do this be strong take it a day at a time and do the steps that you need to to get your health right uh, take care of your body even if it means getting surgery or something it's worth it and um yeah that's pretty much it so i will see you guys in the next video